is brought to you by the North Broward Hospital District. Good evening and welcome to Channel 19 AT&T Original Programming. This is Healthy Living. I'm Pat O'Meara and we're speaking to you live from our studios tonight. We've got an interesting guest with us tonight who's going to talk about a subject that's new to me. Uh, Dr. Miguel Gonzalez is a board certified OBGYN. Not a new subject, but what he does is he has earned his medical degree from the University of Madrid. Now, additionally, he is a master hypnotist and hypnotherapist. Dr. Gonzalez has been using hypnosis to give women the experience of a comfortable childbirth. This is news to me. He even used hypnosis to deliver his own children 25 years ago, something new back then. Dr. Gonzalez has been practicing medicine here in Broward County for 26 years. He's active on the medical staff of Broward General Medical Center, and we welcome you and are happy to have you here tonight. But before we get into the childbirthing process and the use of hypnosis, so many of our viewers are often confused about what the state of mm. hypnosis really is. What really happens to you when you go into hypnosis? Is it a scary thing? Is it something that you once you get into, if you're not there to take them out, they're stuck in that zone forever and ever? Explain to us first the process of hypnosis. What state is it? Okay. Well, this is the, the big problem that I have in the practice of medicine with uh, sometimes with the patients and sometimes with the doctors to explain what is hypnosis. And the bad rap that it has been over the years, you know, having uh, uh, the spending most of the people has been in, in, in maybe in shows and television or in cruise ships and people go uh, on a stage and do the chicken or some kind of silly <laughs> and stupid things. Um, but it is uh, something uh, much more serious, of course. Uh, you know, this is actually is an, uh, a natural state of mind. Your mind is many times into hypnosis or, or, or tapping into the subconscious mind, and you don't even realize about that. It's nothing uh, parapsychological. It's nothing magic. It's, it's, it's nothing uh, esoteric. It's, it's a state of mind that only you have to know how to go and reach that point because hypnosis is all self-hypnosis. And all what I do is to teach and to show a person how to go in that state. And you are there, and then you, you take the advantage of, uh, of the power that gives you the subconscious mind to act in different ways and to, and, and, and to have a lot of uh, uh, good applications, and like in, in childbirth and, and for many other type of problems where hypnosis can produce a, a therapy. And we are using every single day much more about these techniques and, and with alternative and complementary medicine right now is more accepted and, and it, it's more, and we know more about that, so about hypnosis. Do you work with people to teach them how to better use this certain state of mind to take control of some issue, whether it be childbirth, which we'll talk about a little bit later, or pain control, perhaps pain from another operation yeah. that they've had or something that can't be fixed, a scar tissue or something, internal scar tissue. Do you teach people how to put themselves into a relaxed state so that they can control the sensation of this? Of course. Um, one of the main uses, and we use a lot in hypnosis, is in the pain control. And this is a, a, one of the things that we use in, in childbirth for pain control. But it can be used for chronic pain control also. Of course, and they can be used for alcoholism. They can be used, uh, be used for uh, weight control. They can be used for a smoking sensation, uh, improving games for uh, for uh, for golf, for tennis, and a lot of things. Is tapping into the subconscious mind, mm -hmm. and the subconscious mind is a, has a tremendous power. It, it's nothing new. It's been used for many, many years, for thousands of years. A matter of fact. What's the difference between hypnosis and sleeping? Oh, the, the, the problem that we have right now, uh, <laughs> and this is a, a big problem and, uh, with most of the people, uh, because when they think about, and because the word hypnosis means sleeping, but actually when somebody is into hypnosis, they are not sleeping at all. They are more awake than ever. And a lot of people also, the, the misconception of the hypnosis is some people are going to lose control completely, and they are going to fall asleep, or 
they are going to start talking and saying secrets that they have, or maybe they never wake up. And that's, that's not the fact. They are very much awake. They have control completely. Uh, it's a matter of fact they, they, they listen to the, uh, all the noises. All the senses are much more acute and, and, and much better for a person that can, that can sense everything better. So the stories we hear about people going into a hyp hypnotic state and recalling maybe bad things that happened to them when they were a child, uh, that's only brought about because they wish for that to happen and you're helping to bring that out as, as a hypnotist or us others who are in psychology do? Yeah, of course. Hypnosis is, uh, is, um, is tapping into the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is where is, where is the permanent memory. In the conscious mind, we only use temporary memory. But in the, in the, in the subconscious mind, it's like, a, it's like the hard drive of your computer where all the programs are. And sometimes, for therapy purposes, of course, we have to regress that, that person to that state of mind and to that type, uh, whatever happened at, with that person at a certain age. And um, it's very amazing to know, uh, to see how these people really remember things when they were a child, five years old, four years old, with all kind of details, that in the conscious mind they would be unable to, to go to that, to that situation. Okay, well we're going to talk more about how this process is used now with childbirthing because this is, as I said to you when we opened the show, viewers, news to me. Uh, our phone lines are open, though, if you have some questions about uh, what you've heard so far tonight for Dr. Gonzalez. Uh, please feel free to call us at 532-6706, where we're speaking to you live from our studios tonight here at Channel 19. Can anybody be hypnotized? Is it any age, or does it stop at a certain age? If we have some uh, some viewers that are a little bit older than our childbirthing mothers, uh, um, hypnosis is self hypnosis. Okay, so anybody that wants to be hypnotized can be hypnotized. Okay. And sometimes the problem is that people are too anxious to be hypnotized and they cannot be hypnotized. But if if somebody wants to be hypnotized and and follow the suggestions, because I will give a suggestion. And when I give a suggestion, the person can go and can accept the suggestion and they go into hypnosis or don't accept the suggestion. Or the people go with the idea, well, I, I really don't know if that's going to work, but I have nothing to lose. Let's get a, give a chance. It's not going to work. Or I'm going to try to be hypnotized. It's not going to work. And some people said, uh, I think that uh, somebody tried to hypnotize me and I couldn't not be hypnotized. It's because they don't work. Or sometimes they were into hypnosis because remember everything they thought they were not hypnotized, and actually they were hypnotized. They were? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have some video that you brought with you tonight of the process that you utilize in the childbirthing process and in the teaching that you do to help others, um, men and women, uh, in the husband's role as far as the childbirthing process. Let's take a look at that, and, and maybe you could explain what you're doing here. Okay. Um, as, uh, as you see there, this uh, lady is a, a lady, um, she went into, in, um, to have the, the delivery of the baby with two, two sessions of uh, hypnosis. Um, um, she was getting trained in some place, but she called me as an emergency because she thought it was, was not getting no time. She was falling asleep, and she wants to, to do my, uh, she, she saw in the, in, the, in the newspaper, and she won uh, to do uh, my, my, my method. As you see, what I am to the system into hypnosis right now is completely hypnotized. And, and you can see I create pain in the abdomen. So the sensation of the pain that she's getting right there, then is going to transfer into in, in the brain to the point that that sensation is not going to be uncomfortable anymore. So that's a, a way of, of training um, that I do uh, prior to, to the to delivery of the baby. And there are sensations in which I, I produce this uh, anesthesia. And it's what I call. Uh, and what we call like a natural epidural, actually. So the patient knows what epidural means. So they go into hypnosis and they don't feel uh, any pain at all. One of the parts, the most important part maybe, and the whole method of comfortable childbirth that, I, that is how I call, is to remove the fear and the patient. Because the, the pain sensation, they are uh, really amplified in a state of fear and anxiety. And most of the women, just the fact that they, they, they're going to have a baby, they panic and they hear all the wrong and the bad stories for, as a matter of fact, biblically for many years they said you are going to deliver it with pain and suffering. Right. And they right. heard things from the mother and from, uh, from friends. So 
they are going to have a baby and instead of panic. And it's a matter of fact, um, semantics the, the, means that the words means a lot. And unfortunately, a lot of doctors and nurses are still using uh, uh, words like uh, uh, labor pain. So call me when you have pains every 10 minutes. Okay, well tell me what you're doing here. You just did something to her and now is this her husband? Yeah, well I just edit a little bit, but what I do is transfer uh, the, uh, um, the hypnosis quote power into the husband. Actually the patient is the one who does it. So, but the, but the, the, uh, the husband when touch the forehead is the cue to, to go and to fall uh, into hypnosis. Now, in this case, though, you just snapped your I fingers. I just snapped. I told her that I was going to do that. The most important thing in hypnosis is to prepare the mind. The, man, the mind is going to do things. If you said, when I do that, you are going to do that, or this is what you want to feel, is what the mind is going to You have to prepare the mind, prime the mind. And I said, after I do, when I click my, my fingers, you are going to fall into hypnosis. And she will do that. And she, she helped wants to do you it. to do that to her yeah. by telling herself well, that's well, what she wanted. Yeah, okay. what, what happened actually, this patient has been already going to what we call an induction. It would take maybe like six minutes to go and relaxation. But now, after that first session, we have what we call, um, and this is the state now, the post suggestion to the fact that when I touch her in the forehead and she's ready for it, she will come to this state of relaxation that she had before. So this is what a post suggestion, all I had to do is touch the forehead and she will go to this type of relaxation. And you see that in the forearm there, I was sticking needles. Uh, oh, is that what you had there? Yes. I thought you were just and, pinching and, and, her. Yeah, well, I was, no, but you see that um, some blood coming out. Oh, this I is, see you know, that. And it, but she don't feel anything at all. She don't feel pain at all because I give the suggestion that she has anesthesia in the forearm. And then I transfer this anesthesia to the belly. Oh. So she will, you know. Okay. So these needles that you're putting in her are not meant, to, they're meant to help train her to take control of that pain but sensation. But these are regular needles that we use in the office to, uh, okay. to take some blood. Okay. You know. So, and then the husband I can do that. And I teach also self-hypnosis to the patient to, with a cue, that when they put the thumb and the finger together, they can go and relax and go, this is the relaxation. They, and they practice that at home. So what did you just do? You lifted her head up? Okay, well, yes, because I left the, head up right now, okay. And, and she's still in the hypnotic still in the, state. And she can walk into hypnosis too. Because one of the things that I do with this hypnotic state and the hospital, uh, she can walk in the labor room with a, a unit of, we call telemetry, so we can monitorize the baby. Mm -hmm. And she can be walking and they, I have all the videos because they showed big contractions with no discomfort at all. Mm -hmm. Be now, you teach these patients of yours, like this patient that we just saw, you teach her for some time prior. This wasn't her first visit to your office. And this one was the second visit. Second visit. Okay. So I have, I spent with her two hours because, he, as a matter of fact, she was going to deliver by another doctor in and, and another hospital, and, and she was panicky because it was going to be induced. But normally, you have a process by which you have a series of, of sessions that you go through with somebody. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and maybe take a caller from some of you viewers who have some questions after seeing this tape. Our phone lines are open at 532-6706. In the meantime, stay with us. We'll be right back after this message. Just knowing your risk of cancer can improve your odds. You probably think it could never happen to you, but prostate cancer is a leading killer of men in the United States. Fortunately, today, with early detection and treatment, prostate cancer can be cured. Learn how to recognize your risks and the early warning signs of prostate cancer. Call 1-888-899-8188 and ask for your free cancer care kit and risk profile. Cancer care services at the North Broward Hospital District. It's your life. Protect it. Good evening and welcome back to WTWN Channel 19. This is Healthy Living. I'm Pat O'Meara and Dr. Gonzalez is with us tonight. We're talking about hypnosis. We're talking about the use of hypnosis in the childbirthing process. And that's something that, as I said, is new to me. But 25 years ago, he delivered all of his children using this process. And uh, his wife didn't have any pain. And we're talking about pain control and what hypnosis is doing to help this happen. So apparently, as we all know, we've heard for many years, hypnosis has been around for many, many, many centuries. Um, 
But some of the things that people are unsure about is, is it dangerous for certain types of people with certain body structures? Is it better for them to go ahead and use complete anesthesia? Is it better for them to, to go with the Lamaze mes method? Uh, or is it something that you need to investigate with a patient as to what is best for them? Okay, well, it's not dangerous at all. It doesn't d danger whatsoever. Okay. It's very can safe. I, can I cut you off just a second? I'm sorry to do this, but Mrs. Thomason is back on the line, and she was holding before while we were showing the video, right. and I don't want to lose her again, so let's get back okay. to that in just okay. a second. Good evening, and welcome to Healthy Living. Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm Mrs. Thomas, and I have a... Did they work for older women, like I'm 66 years old, and uh, I have a chronic uh, migraine, do I work on something like that? Because it's been five months that I have a migraine who never stop. And I don't know what to do. I go crazy. Um, well, the problem is, and you know, Mrs. Thomas, migraine is a, is a, is a difficult, difficult kind of problem. And, um, uh, and what, what it works for some people is to really do relaxation techniques and biofeedback techniques, and sometimes they, they work. Oh. And, and but migraine, unfortunately, is a is a big problem. Uh, there are cases in which uh, we can do at um, some what we call regressions, and then regression if they is due to some kind of psychological problems that will help you very much. But you can control also uh, and, and the pain control, and, and, and you can uh, change uh, certain areas of, of your brain, the sensation, and it's, it's difficult. But uh, and some people it works. Not in everybody. I see. Thank so, you. So it's nothing to do with their age, by the way. Yeah. It's not. Uh, no. Hypnosis can be used. Because it's the first. I never had a migraine before, and all of a sudden, you know, four months ago, and they never leave me. Well, I, you have to be sure that what you have is is your migraines, and maybe you have to to uh, go to a neurologist. I and, did. I did. And, and CAT scan. And I got. Had, I got all then that. Then you had to watch your diet and uh, different things, uh, organic things, before you go with the psychological aspect of uh, or the use of your mind. Okay. But it sounds to me like it's worth her trying this. If she's done everything else, then it's worth her trying the process of hypnosis as a means to maybe control the well, pain. Well, um, if you see, what is very interesting is, and the whole basis of the theory is. Is the, the work of Bernheim, there was a doctor uh, who studied the, uh, and, and put a theory of the called the uh, idea dynamics. Uh -huh. any, uh, any ideas or any type of suggestions and words sometimes can produce changes in the, in the human body. So if you are able to relax and, and put your mind into uh, produce maybe vasodilatation of the cerebral brain, which is the one that produced the uh, migraine, you maybe are able to do that, and you can do it with uh, feedback, or you can do it with hypnosis if you have uh, that kind of state and control. Uh, I don't have m too much experience in that, but we have experience in other, in other things. Uh, mm, it was worth, worth to, to try, of course. Oh, could she call North Broward Medical Center and get some information on doctors who do perform this for people? Um, well, the problem is that there are not too many doctors who perform this. Um, I retrained two years ago, three years ago now, when I became master in noticing no therapist. And at that meeting, there were no doctors. Uh -huh. that, uh, they, were diff they were nurses, there were people very much interested in different, for the, but they were not doctors. It's not talking in the school. Uh, but uh, today and, and every day, there are new programs, and, uh, and they're doing studies in Harvard uh, about the uh, hypnosis, and it's, it's going to be taught very soon, mm -hmm. I think. Well, this. maybe at the end of the show, Ms. Thompson, we're going to give, um, Thomas, we're going to give uh, information on the number of the Dr. Gonzalez's office, and perhaps you can call him tomorrow and get more information on, on how you can pace, possibly treat this problem, because I know migraines are terrible. Well, the, the problem with the, uh, there are a lot of hypnotherapists or hypnotists that they really, they, they have no very good train, and unfortunately, the doctors are, the, we, we know more about the, the mind and, and the body. And, mm -hmm. And you have to be very careful to see who you share a therapy from, okay? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's, uh, there are a lot of people who, who advertise, but uh, they don't really you, have to, you have to watch for the, yeah. the good training. Mm -hmm. I, I train with, uh, with Gerald Kang, which is one of the best ones, and, and, and 
He's, and he's no doctor, but he's a great hypnotherapist and yeah. an hypnotist. Now, we brought another video with us in which you work with uh, your people ahead of time, the, the classes that you have. And here, explain what this is. Okay, but this is a class in Broward General in the auditorium in which uh, I have a lot of people interested for different reasons, for smoke sensation. And, and what I like to do and with my patients is to teach what is all about hypnosis. So we, I am here teaching and, and removing all these misconceptions about what hypnosis is all about. And uh, it was a good group there, very much interested. It's for free, and, and once in a while we do this in Broward, we, we, we show. And what are they what doing all about here? Well, this is the power of the subconscious mind, and, and like in, in this case, I, I make the the, uh, the people to close their eyes and, and imagine, visualize that they have a heavy weight in one hand and a balloon in the other hand, and with the eyes closed, and and the, then when they open the eyes, they realize one hand is up and the other hand is down. Oh. So those subjects are very suggestionable and very easy to get hypnotized. And there are people who open their eyes, they don't do anything, and people they don't want to do. Uh, they, uh, that people is very difficult because they don't, they don't want to, to okay. be hypnotized. But as you suggested with the childbirthing process, getting back to that, which is what you specialize in, as you said earlier, it's, it's the process of working with someone who wants to be worked with to let them process this level of the brain into suggestion of relaxation, a state of relaxation. See, what, what I do is, what I do is first of all, uh, I remove the fear and the anxiety. I make them f uh, feel and realize that uh, to have a childbirth is going to be a process of a happiness process. This is somebody just in the class there. Uh, it's going to be a happy process, okay? So there's no reason to be afraid. I, re I remove all those words, uh, the, like labor pains, because do you realize that we're still calling uh, labor rules? Sounds awful. Use the word we should call uh, childbirth rooms or, or childbirth suites, but no labor rooms. The a, word labor. That, yes, the word labor. Labor pains instead of uh, uterine contractions. We have to change. The doctor, we have to do that. And I want to do that in the next meeting in the American College. I am preparing some videotapes to, to show in the American College. So we're going to call it childbirthing yes, and then the happy room. And <laughs> the new millennium to change all those words and all and those things. With the power of this suggestion, though, as you're saying, when we talked earlier about women who have been in labor for 28 hours, 24 hours, You've also said that in many, many cases that's probably not what needed to be because of the process of using perhaps hypnosis to get better control of relaxation and uh, being able to relax and therefore the baby comes a lot sooner. Of course. Did you, do you realize that nature is not so stupid to, uh, to design the human body to have a childbirth and to have uh, the perpetuation of the species having somebody for 24 hours attached to a bed with IVs, with monitors. No, there will be no, 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 no people on, on this <laughs> earth. The, the childbirth process is a natural, supposed to be quick, and supposed to be not so uncomfortable like it's portrayed and like right now we see in the, in the most developed countries. And in developed countries, in China and South America, the women they have it in the rice field, they come back and they keep working, they are quick, when we do hypnosis, many of these women, the, the labor is short tremendously to maybe three or four hours. My daughter had just had a baby, the first baby with, in three hours labor. That was great. Uh, some of the patients that take two and, a half hour, uh, two and a half hours labor, three hours labor, because they not only remove the pain, but they, I teach them and, and they know how to relax. The birth canal relax and everything is much better. Okay. And if they need medication, it's much less that they yeah. need that. So they can still take medication? Of course. Yeah, there's no problem with that. A woman should know, uh, bear more discomfort that they, they can tolerate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is no, uh, and, and unfortunately, natural childbirth with this breathing, uh, the some women, they get exhausted and they get, uh, they, they take a long time and then they're up in a cesarean section. Uh, if we short out the time, and even the new medication is much less. And even when I, when I have to do cesareans in those patients and we have to do a epidural or something, they are so relaxed, they... they, they, they you use less medication. Oh, yes, and, and even to, to put a, the, the spinal tap or whatever, they, the patient relaxes, they are more comfortable, and, and the postpartum and postoperatively, is, they, are, they do much better. Mm -hmm. I use for surgery also. What uh, would someone do if they were watching tonight and wanted to get more information from you? What's your um, office number? 
Okay, my office number, I don't know if you can show in some play. My office number is, um, um, there we have I don't it. know, we have it right there. 954? This is my Miguel Angel 42 AOL. That is my, uh, that's my uh, email my address. Email address. And, and the other one is, uh, it's in 954 um, 491 That's an, an office in, in North uh, Broward, Cross Holy Cross, and then I have another office across Broward General. All I have right, two well, offices, and then uh, just write me an email and any questions that you have. I will be very glad. And and we are doing very often in, in Broward those, those classes, so okay. people can go there. And those and are free so people can learn more about this? Oh, yeah. And they'll call um, you to find out more about it? My mission, my mission really is to to teach. I would like to teach. It's not okay. that I want to do all, now all the deliveries in Broward, right. but I would like to teach nurses and I to teach doctors. To because teach doctors to know more about it. It's the use of the mind and the new millennium the is very important. The, and the power of the subconscious mind is tremendous. Well, Dr. Gonzalez, thanks again for being with us tonight. It's brought on a whole new subject and we hope to have you back so we can discuss more of it. In the meantime, have a good evening and uh, we'll see you next time here on Healthy Living. Thank you.